Okay, so welcome back to Python application programming. Uh, there is some mistake here. I have to change it to it's not while loops, so continue and break. It is strings and files. Okay. Yeah, I welcome you back to this Python programming. Today we are going to just continue what we have left from yesterday. We had um, just come out of with some kind of uh, methods and strings. We have used some dot quotations or invocations to strings so that we can um, read some of the methods and uh, we also know how to uh, drivers inside the strings, how to read characters, how to um, uh, read individual characters and how to create new strings and uh, other uh, techniques or other process involved in strings. So in today, uh, we are going to uh, study how are we going to pass inside the strings. Okay, so how we are going to pass inside the strings and uh, we are going to read a text file from the external memory. So for whatever files that we had read or whatever the data that we are trying to handle are on the program. Suppose we have assumed a data called some string. So we are trying to manipulate or we are trying to process the data which is on the program. Okay is on the program and now if you want to interact with the external memory like if you want to interact with an external memory data okay we have to read the data from the files from the location locate the location of the file which where it is present and read accordingly okay so here in this class we are going to read a text file and then after reading text file we are going to go through the individual lines and now the individual lines becomes a strings for you. Now it, it's easy for us to handle the strings based on, on our previous experience on our previous class. Okay. So what is parsing strings? Today, the first topic is parsing strings. Okay. What do you mean by parsing strings? Suppose uh, I have a string called, suppose I have a string called, yeah, this is my string, suppose this is a string. Is it visible guys? Is it visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. No, that string is visible. Yes, sir, data equals from. Okay, good. So now, if this is a string, this might be one line in your text also in future. So for now, I shall represent this entire line. This is a mail history. The mail being sent from Stephen dot marker dot uct dot ac dot za on Saturday, Jan fifth, time and date. See the time, uh, hour, minute, and seconds format, and uh, the year two thousand eight. So this is just a mail history from Stephen, which has been received. So now I've just exported a line from a text file, and this is the data now. So this is one string, okay? Now if I want to pull out only the second half of the address, I want output as uct dot. So I just want to know, I am just interested in this 
result. I want a result or an answer as like this. I just I am just interested in the domain. Okay. I just want to know the domain of that main ID. Correct. So how you are going to pull out only the second half of the address that is uct dot ac dot z a from this string? Then we shall go to the advanced uh, uh, file handling issues. Then we will import the file and we will look for a particular string or a substring. Okay, uh, the, uh, my of my interest. Say uh, the domain address. Okay, so the domain of an email address. So how we are going to do it? Can can anybody tell like how we are going to do it? Because we are quite familiar with handling the strings now, and we also know a couple of methods. Also, we also know a couple of methods how to use the string. Can you just tell me like how we can uh, use this? Just just uh, what what is going on in your mind? What is going on in your mind if you just look at this data? Yes, guys, I have asked you a simple question. Okay, uh, do you have a domain here after X symbol? Is it okay? Do you have the domain which you are interested, which is appearing after at? Yeah, come on, I need some answers here. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, fine. I just need an answer here. I am looking for this part that is uct dot ac dot z a. That is a domain of an email ID. Okay, it's a domain user, and I am not interested in any other strings or characters inside this entire string. So I want to take out this part. So this should be my result or an answer. So in any of this main inbox history. I could come across the domain names after X symbol, right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, can I write? Can I just try to fix up a position of at first? I'll call a variable called. I'll call a variable called at pos. That means at position. I'm just looking for the position of at. At position is equal to. Now I have a method called find. So I have a method called find which is applied on the string. So here the string is data dot find. Okay, dot find. What I need to find? I need to find this is an at. Correct. I need to find what? I need to find a string at. So now I'll just try to comment this session and run, and I'll print at position. Now you see print at position. What will you get? What will you get if I print ATPOS? I will get the index, correct? I will get what? I will get the index one, two, three, four. Space is five. Likewise, I will get the index of this at position twenty one. So the twenty one is what index of this data. Now, if you want to see, it could, you can also see like what is data. At that at pos variable, it is the same. It is at. It's taking some time. Maybe it's been delayed. Yeah. One second. We have a small correction here. Yeah. Can you see this now? Data at pos. What is data at pos? Data at twenty one is also same. At and what is ATPOS? ATPOS is nothing but the position of at. So now I am fine with the position of at position, right? Now find the position of the first space because see here in your data 
after position after this domain i have a space here just locate the space now how to locate the space use the same use the same method but i want what sppos what do you mean by sppos space space position data dot find what i need to find find space see here find space find space after what after at position correct yes or no see here dot find is taking two input arguments find what find what and from where from where so this is the syntax so this is the syntax these are the two input arguments which will be given to find dot find find what i want to find space so i just leave it empty and from where from at position from at position find the position of the space correct okay and again i print that spos and then see like what is that yeah what is the error here so this should be a variable so i so read the qs is a variable yeah 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 i got it now can you see here 31 is the position of the space if you could read also 21 22 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 31 so now this is the space position now if i know this position and if i know this position now i can easily extract this part right i can easily use string slicing method to extract the portion of the string which we are looking for how you are going to extract now i would say i am trying to find the host right the domain host so i will call it as a host here or a domain is equal to host is equal to data inside the bracket square brackets you know how to slice the string with respect to an index use square bracket atpos from atpos okay from atpos plus 1 because i don't want that at it should be from 22nd character so i know at position it is at 21 and plus 1 will go to this host or domain plus 1 till what till sppos till this space that is 31 and it is excluded see guys it is as good as saying data of data of 21 position to 31 position but it excludes you remember it always excludes this number and if i say print host print host and you would get the expected result which i had intended for correct guys is there any confusion here so how are we going to pass inside the string with respect to the index values with respect to the location of the intended string or a substring now i would like to give a small homework here okay a small homework try try this one okay. try to get the minute try to get the minute of the string the minute value of the string do some exercise okay minute value for string it, it would take a lot of efforts it will take a lot of efforts just give a try i want this portion of the string remember i want to locate this colon inside the given string irrespective of the spaces i am not worried about the spaces just locate the first colon okay find the first colon because you should know the format right you should know the data format so if you know this data format 
go to the first colon look at this position now this will be your at position this will be your colon position now c o l p o s c o l p o s just give any names which are quite easy for you to understand what is that particular variable and what is it trying to do and then followed by the next colon start with this point okay and or else after this point since you know there are only two numbers fetch only two numbers increment the next values with two whenever you read these two this colon position increment it by two because you know there is only there are only two values which can be used to locate the minutes or to identify the minutes okay so you just print the other two values after locating this position so that might be the minute value of the string likewise go to the second likewise uh, if i want the uh, year year of year is very simple just go to the end of the string sir could you push that uh, variable data in the text box now that that is next coming i i'll extract it since i have assumed that i have just copied the data from the text so that is the, my next class we are going to uh, next class in the sense next uh, session so i am going to handle this file and just extract the text file so now i want you guys to try this out to extract extract minute value of the string likewise you can also extract second and also you can extract an year okay yeah so this is all about passing strings now let us uh, go to the format operator the format operator is indicated as let me just put a format operator here format operator it, it is usually used to print uh, used in print statements okay format operator r denoted as a percent type symbol as in your c other programming languages like i say percent type b as an integer percent type f as a um, a uh, floating point value and a percentile uh, yes as what percentile s as a string here now i written the same percentile b is for integer but here for percentile g is for floating point value remember percentile g is for float the other things you know this is for int and uh, this is for string Okay. Now, how to use these percentile operators? Okay. The format operator allows us to construct strings, replacing the parts of the strings with the data stored in the variable. Understand? It will replace the parts of the string with the data stored in the variable. Suppose I have a data called camels is equal to forty-two. I have counted the camels in a desert. and it was counted as 42 now i want to use it in a print statement print okay print what i have spotted percentile b camels see here print i hope you can see this string now i have spotted percentile d here percentile d camels correct here Lines. Yeah, what is the problem here? Can anybody tell what is the problem here? Sir, I have declared a string. Yeah, declared a string again in my syntax. What is the problem here? Sir, it should just be camels and not percent camels. Good. still it is showing an error yeah oh no it is not been added inside it should be what oh there is some error now how should i put this inside ah invalid syntax we just remove this print and see how it behaves Let me 
Okay, I think uh, we should not give the comma separation here. So be careful with the comma. Even I noticed it today. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is no comma. There is no comma separation here. Earlier we used to use it. So I can use this format operator percentile D camels. So here, see, this is a string. This is a string. Percentile D always replaces the value of the variable inside this string. And the value of the variable is declared exactly next to the string, the print statement, again in terms of percentile. Likewise, if I have, uh, if I want to include more than one format operator, okay, more than one format operator, just uh, we'll have the data called, uh, we'll have a string called in percentile DES. So if I want to print this, okay, if I want to print this, here I have used percentile 3. So this will be replaced by an integer value inside the string. Point 0.1 is a float value. This will be replaced by point G inside the string. And camels is a string here, percentile S. Okay, percentile S. So all in the single, single braces. Okay, if I run this program, you could see inside a string, in a given string, okay, in a given string, the format operators, that is percentile, replaces parts of the string with the data stored in the variable when applied to the integers. Okay, don't get confused with the percentile is also the modulus operator. Okay, it is also a modulus operator. So be careful with it. So if you have used three percentiles, percentile D, suppose if I have used percentile D here, let me just copy it. Okay, uh, if I use inside a string, I have percentile B space percentile B space percentile D. I have used how many operators? Three percentile operators followed by percentile, but I have given only two, but I have given only two values. So again, you will get a, an error saying that not enough arguments for format string. So I have to give how many percentile operators, three percentile operators, three variables. Suppose if I give point S here and I try to run the program, so again, it's taking why because it is a string, so it doesn't matter. Okay. But if I say percentile D here and if I try to push a string, then there will be a problem right? because you have declared it as percentile D, but you are given an input as a string. So this is not valid. So you should be careful with the percentile operator here. Percentile D should be replaced by percentile S. Then you can see the string will be replaced inside the string. So you can do some other experiments. So as and when you gen uh, generate the errors, okay, as and when you generate the errors, you'll be doing more things, okay. So most of the times I use this kind of percentile, that is a format operator, okay, while printing the statements and trying to replace the string, part of the string by its variables and in the sequence, understand this is in the sequence. Okay, this is in the sequence. You cannot declare elsewhere. You cannot declare the string elsewhere. Here, the position should be in line with the declaration of the values inside the variable. You can also declare the variable outside and you can call the string rather than directly declaring the string inside the bracket. I can say a is equal to one. Okay, a is equal to one. B is equal to B is equal to str and uh, C is equal to three. So it is one and the same. So all are one and the same. Okay. Either you can declare. So sometimes what happens after some processing of data, we get some values in, stored in some variables, and I want to print those values in statements. So that that can be done here in this format. So this is all about uh, format operators. Remember, percentile D for integer, percentile G for float, percentile S for a string. 
So now we will go to files. So this is a very important session where you are going to uh, read the data. Understand the prime focus of these files is to read and write text files. And also you can work with the database, database files. So when we want to read a, or write a file, say something which is located on your hard disk. So what we must do, first we need to open the file. If there is no file, you have to create it. Understand, you have to create it. So opening the file means you are trying to communicate with your operating system which knows where the particular data or file is located or stored. Suppose, assume that the file is located in the same folder where I have created this my classwork module. I have created this my classwork module to Jupyter file in a folder which consists a file already, which consists a text file. So when you open a file, understand, when you open a file, you are asking the operating system to find the file by name. Always you open the file by its name, you have indexed it, right? You have indexed it with some name. So if the open is successful, now the operating system returns a file name and you are given a file to handle. Understand, what is that happening? You are given a file to handle. If the requested file exists, you know to worry. Okay. If the requested file doesn't exist, then it would say what? It would say the file doesn't exist. If it is existing, you have the proper permission to read the file and we will see what happens when we try to read the file. We have a we have an option called F hand is equal to open. See, I have a text for a file called mbox hyphen short.txt. I have a txt file. So let me just share the, the screen of the location, the folder, so that you could understand. Okay, can you, can you just see the folder guys here? Can you see the folder here? Yes, Pass. sir. Okay, can you see the uh, text file here, mbox? Yes. Or text, sorry. Okay, and if you open the text, you just, also you just try to visualize what are the contents inside that text document. Okay, can you see this text file? So these are the lines inside the text file. I have some seven lines, three plus four, seven lines. Okay. And I have some lines which starts with from, okay. I have some lines which has got some data, right? Which has got some no, transaction. Been displayed here. Yeah. Your text Pardon? file is visible. Uh, my uh, text file is not visible. Okay, fine. I just. Uh, it's still in that just, folder on yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, you will be visible with the folder. Why? Because I have not shared the entire screen or the desktop. That give me some time. Just trying to share the text file. Okay, fine. I think now it's visible. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. If you could see this text file, you can see many lines. Here I have some seven lines. It's a transaction history, a main history. And I have two lines which starts with from, okay? And uh, the other lines are quite distinctive because I have, have other lines which started with return, date, to subject, details, and so on, okay? So in this situation, if I want to read this file and if I want to read the lines inside this file and if I want to open this file, there are many syntaxes, right? I just need to follow the syntax. How we should follow the syntax that we shall know using your Python codes. I have a function called open. I have what a function called open. What we are doing is this my classwork. Okay, now classwork is visible. I'll just come back to the classwork now. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So now if I want to open I will use f hand is equal to open. Inside the open, I have an input argument where I have given mbox hyphen short dot text. 
and I simply say print F hand. I just want to know, curious about what is that F hand? Pardon? Uh, nothing, sir. Nothing, sir. Okay, fine. So now I just, I'm just curious, what is this variable? This is an object, guys. This is an object and it gives you all the information about this object. F hand is an object, it is an IO operator, text IO wrapper. So this is an embedded or OS based, uh, what do you say? Uh, the syntax name, so it is an mbox.txt, it is in read mode and encoded with CP1252. So it's an encoding operation which is performed to store this text. Okay, so likewise, if I go to, so there are, there are read, open, close, read, write. So there are different operators, there are different functions. If the file doesn't exist, open will fail with a track back and you will not get a handle to access. Now, if you have opened the file, now what you need to do? A text file can be thought of as a sequence of lines. It can be, it can be analyzed as a sequence of lines. Just I had multiple lines, like seven lines. Now, a Python string can be thought of a sequence of characters, right? Python string, it's a sequence of lines. Text file, it's a sequence of lines. Now, if I want to read, if I want to read the line, so what I need to do? So what I need to do? I need to use a command called for line in F hand. I'm just trying to read how many lines are there. Okay, I'll just try to remove this print statement. Now I will read for line in F hand. Okay, for line in F hand, I'll just try to declare another variable count is equal to zero. Why? Because Whenever I read the line for line in F hand, count is equal to count plus one. Print line count is equal to how many lines are there? So line count is seven. If you are curious, just say print line. You will see all the lines, individual lines are printed. Like each iteration. Can you see this? So all seven lines are printed in each iteration. That means this line is a string. This is very important. This line is a string, which is as good as the string which I used here. Understand? So this would be the line at the first iteration. Correct? This would be the line at the first iteration. The same. One and the same. So this would be the line at the first iteration. Now, can I use the same position, at position, SP position on this and try to perform some operation? Okay, so now further, further, if you know the file is relatively small compared to the size of your main memory, you can read the whole file into one string. This is also very important. See here I am reading, now what is line here? Line are individual lines. I can also read the whole string, the whole lines into one string. How? I will use, I will use fn dot read. Dot read is a function. Okay, dot read is a function. Here what I did, I just simply read individual lines from fn. If I say fn dot read, if I say fn dot read, so what is this INP now? INP is nothing but what? All the characters inside that text file. All the characters, understand? All the characters at a time. Okay, all the characters at a time inside this text file. So I can also say INP of, okay, INP of, INP of, say, colon to 20. What do you mean by colon 20? Here, guys, what do you mean by colon 20? INP index from the beginning, from the beginning till the 20th character till the 20th character. See here from the beginning till the 20th character, but excludes 20. That means this 19th character. Correct. I can fetch the strings from the beginning till the 20th character. I can also do the reverse from the 20th character till the last. See from the 20th character that is from rd here till the last 
till 39722 and understand here the m complete string is in one single string there is no line formatting here there is no line formatting it is one single string you can also just try to get the length length of the complete string so length of this input length of its input is 357 there are 357 characters inside the text file inside this text file okay so i can print those 357 characters all 357 characters just say print input the say print input i will put see all 57 characters have been printed okay now now i have some interesting task to do uh what if i want to find how many how many characters or how many lines that starts with from how to do that guys how to calculate i have a text file see i have a text file here i just go to paste it here okay now i have a text file so what is line at every iteration what is line what is a variable line here hello iterative element yeah it is an iterative variable it represents each line of the text so can i say can i say line dot starts with can i say line dot starts with here instead of line if line dot starts with line dot starts with colon from is it okay i just want to count the line which starts with from colon i just put this inside the if loop by giving a tag and i say line starts with from so i just want to count how many lines that starts with from so there are two lines as you can see here this is one line which starts with from this is the second line which starts with from if line starts with from that means you have received a mail from some person and if you are interested to see whether i have received a mail from uct.aca.za host or a domain so in this situation you can use the same loop here you have used this loop right at position print and so on so use the same loop this is uh let me copy this and i print the host right so i'll go here and then rather than counting just simply counting i shall go to this i'll just remove this at position it's not required i need this spps i don't want this print statement and i want this post also i want this post also and i will print host every in the every iteration can you see now i have printed every iteration uct.ac.za that means you had line which started from started with from there were two lines and i have received the mails from these hosts okay that's an uh, an interesting thing what you can do and i can also can use this sir it's finding the at and the space in the variable data sir it should find it in uh, variable if and no sir if and or input no sir line 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 sorry correct what you mentioned it is correct it should go through line line dot find and this is line correct 
what you have mentioned is correct. You will get the same answer. Line is nothing but a data, correct? You will get the same answer. Good. So there was a variable. It was data there. Here it is a line. Line represents a data with an individual line. This is one and the same. Now I can also use some, some print statements like this. Out of seven lines, I have two lines start with from. So what I need to do? I need to have out of seven lines. So I need to have some counts here. So every time I need two counts or I can say out of I can say in the given text I have I have percentile count here. In the given text, oh, sorry, there is a typo error. Kindly ignore this error. I, in the given text, I have two line starts with from. See, I have used this percentile D operator and the same statements, same statements, right? But in a different uh, uh, format, but in a different form. Okay. So, likewise, I can also read, guys, I can also read an image. I just try to read an image and uh, just uh, try to put some additional effort so that you can understand uh, better the forms. See here, I'll, I have an image called example.png. Okay, I have an example.png. And here, I'll, I'm trying to convert this image into a gray image and I will show both the images. Wait. So these are the two images which I have read. Just in order to read those images, I need some libraries because as it is in Python libraries, you, you cannot import images just by calling uh, some simple sentences like image read or I am read. So there are some specific library functions. Okay, understand? There are some specific library functions. So I've in, used matplotlib.pyplot as plt just in order to plot some values or plot some some content okay i will use this as plt and i will import cv2 okay computer vision tool cv2 version 2 in order to transact or in order to have some access to the image to libraries to the image so i will read i will call the variable called image is equal to cv2 dot im read see here dot notation it is as good as import math, math.py, math.sign, math.square root, math.log10. Understand? So I have imported the library called CV2. So I will just like to reduce this. Okay. I have imported the library called CV2. Inside CV2, I have another method called I am green which will be useful to read the image. Now I have read example.png. So it was in PNG format. It was in color format. Now I have used CV2 to convert. See here, convert color image. So here I have used the variable called image. So I have given input as an image. CV2 to color RGB. See here, read. This is RGB to gray. So I have converted this color RGB image to gray. So now I have plotted that image. See here, I have plotted that image. If you see plot commands. Yeah. Uh, in the fourth line, you have converted it from RGB to gray, right, sir? Yes, 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 yes. Then in the fifth line, why do you have to use CMAP is equal to gray? Uh, not necessary. This was just a syntax. Not necessary. Because I wanted this color map as a gray, so I've just used it, not necessary. Okay, so now it was just a syntax, I just copied and pasted the same, same syntax, but not necessarily to be a gray image or a color, a gray, uh, color map image. 
So now, can you see this uh, pi image search? How many of you see pi image search here in the 50th row? I hope most of you can see pi image search as the 50th row, correct? Yes, sir. How about here in the 350th row, here at the bottom? It's yes, sir. Lit, yes, sir. right? Yes. How about here in the 250th row here? Here, here in the 250th row, can you see here pi image search? No, sir. No, it's not there. Not to worry. It's not there. Nothing to worry. So can you see the pi image search text being appearing on this entire image with different intensity levels? This is too dark. So I'm going to say this is too bright. Where the pixel values will be 255, about 250. If it is above 250, means it is white. Okay, it is brighter. Can you see here? It is little brighter. Okay, and can you see this intensities are going down when you come at this 350th pi image search text, 350th row. So there the pixel intensities are between the range, say, uh, 20 to 35 intensity values. So now I will read this entire matrix. Okay, I'll read this entire matrix row wise. Just consider this as a text and read the first row. I have all zero values because it is dark. When I come to the 50th row, I can see here what is there. This value is somewhere between uh, 50 to 60. 0, 0, 0, then P. P comes with somewhere between 50 to 60. Now, can I read the individual elements of the image? So uh, before that, I want to understand what is the size. I, I'll go to the next uh, cell. What is the size? So if I say H image dot shape 0, 0 means the first, 1 means the second. Image dot shape will have two arguments, 0 and 1. The first one will give the rows, the second one will give the columns. So there are 400 rows and 400 columns. Can you see this 400? 0 to 400, 0 to 400. There are 400 rows and 400 columns. Height and width, both are 400. Now what I will do? I will loop over the image pixel by pixel. I am writing, see understand. I will be writing two loops. One for loop with respect to, one for loop with respect to y in range, in range of what? For y in range of 0 to h. It's just like you are reading row wise, 0 to h. Okay. And the other loop with respect to the column. Now we are in the first row. The first element would be the column. I will say for x in range 0 to w with respect to the width. Am I reading both the elements now? With respect to h and w, this is located 0, 0. In the first iteration, it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Image y comma x. So this is a new image which will be created. Understand? Image y comma x is the new image. I can say this image as the new image is equal to 255. If see, I have used the condition in the same line. See these two for loops and the condition. If image y comma x greater than or equal to five, you make it 255. All the elements you make it 255. Else you make it zero. So I should have only two contrast, either zero or 255. Here there was a variation. See, here I had some 40, here I had 255, here I have got 180, here I got one, uh, 190 or uh, uh, say 120. This is very low intensity represented with 45 as a pixel intensity. Now, if I run this program, okay, so now all the image values which is greater than 5 will be converted to 255. Else the remaining image pixel values will be 0. Now I want to plot. Okay. Now I want to plot and see how it appears. I'm using these two plot commands. 
now you could see all the images are at the same intensity there were some text which are hiding with the low intensity values and now i have made it or converted it to the high intensity values now you could see all the pixel values which are greater than 5 were converted to 255 so all are 255 now okay and the remaining pixel intensities were converted to zero pitch black so this is a for loop two for loops to go row wise and column wise and here i created a new image pixel values with y and x initially it will be 0,0 0,1 0,2 and if image of y comma x is greater than equal to 5 it will be assigned to 255 else it will be assigned to see the simple use of conditions if conditions here next to the assignment value see if else zero very interesting in one single line i have converted the image pixel values which are greater than 5 as 255 else it has been reduced to zero okay so this is a pretty interesting task on image processing which where you need to import two packages one is matplotlib to handle the plots the another one is cv2 to handle the images to read or to explore the packages or library functions with respect to read and write you can do many things you can do many things which will be exploring in the coming classes okay so this was just related to your for loop and if loop how you can use it okay on a particular application like an image processing application where some text like this have got low intensities where it's not visible or which is not good for processing i can use this as a pre processing technique where now i can see the brighter pixels of the brighter text and the hiding text which was hiding see this this got this was hiding here so i just try to improve the intensity value so you can call this as an image enhancement for text recognition okay so yeah this was all about today's class i hope uh, uh, you have understood this particular uh, uh, session not only reading text we have, have read this text but also you can do many things on this how to read how to open how to write you can think about writing the text you can write the text i have just mentioned here open and read but also you can try to edit and you can try to save okay you can try to save some additional characters or you can also try to push some characters inside the text so this can also be done so this was all about your module 2 okay a uh, very small module so where we had come across some iterations iterative loops and all the syntaxes most of them i have covered here okay so the now what lies next with respect to module 2 is how effectively you can utilize the syntaxes what you learned in module 2 how effectively you can utilize the syntaxes or the concepts which you have learned in module 2 on a particular file i have just mentioned a text file and an image file as an example here where you need some extra additional effort to import some packages to read image guys can you see the one second i'll just uh, go back to the html page how it looks uh let give me some time because i have another 5 minutes of time i'll just give you another case study so it's pretty interesting just let me just uh, stop sharing this slide and switch back to uh, let me share the screen okay uh Guys, can you see the entire screen now? Was it visible? Yeah, I need some response if you stay. No, Why did you do this? Oh no. Now it is. Yes, good. sir. Yeah, fine. So I'm just. Uh, how about now? What is visible? S J V I T website. Website. Yeah, S J V I T website. Now, if you can go right click on this S J V I T website and uh, if you can view page source, can you see this view page source? 
just kindly go through this website little bit carefully just observe you have home button if you press this home button this itself is a home button about you have so many about us about the uh, trust about news and announcement and i have departments you have scroll buttons right you have scroll buttons here computer science and now if i click on electronics and communication engineering department so it will navigate to another html page right see this is about the department electronics and communication again you have the faculty uh, course offered research initiatives again you click on faculty it will go to the faculty right see again again the list of faculties again then if i click on my name so you could uh, see uh, the details the profile of an individual faculty and there inside this detail i have a table understand guys what i have i have some information about a faculty here i have a table where i you could see like what are the professional body membership uh, numbers and conferences and other activities and so on can you fetch this information understand can you fetch this information by visiting the website with this url are you finding are you finding my problem my objective to do what so this is a table i want i want you people to go to project title there are no in between uh, what do you say like uh, the authentication process required you not to have a an email id or a password or a captcha code or something like that to get authorized to access this data this is just i have migrated from one html to another html page then again another html page from department of ec to faculty in faculty i have located myself and i have located myself here and i have some research fund project title under this i have four columns say five columns title date funded by amount and date of submission this is one string for me now i want you guys to export this string by visiting the html page and how it is possible so i have to do lot of things here lot of sir, things sir. yeah it is uh, a pop up right sir then the, the url url doesn't change when you click on this no 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 the url doesn't change but if i click on this it may be a pop up but it has got the data inside this box okay this is a data which has been stored in sql format and they have created this data format yes sir okay now if you say uh, view page source if you say view page source now you could identify few things here this is an html script okay this is an html script it would be better if i go to the first page and then say view page source if i go to home and then say view page source you have a couple of libraries where you can pass through html understand i repeat okay. passing strings is as good as passing html and now since you guys know how to use or how to locate a particular string how to locate a position of at very similarly can you locate if i go to view page source can you locate h r e f can you see h r e f here can you see h r e f here guys yes, can you see h r e f here yes sir so h reference is nothing but it is another web link which goes to another web page this is h r e f https h r e f https so can you see this h r e f so all these things are nothing but another hyperlink okay now this will be read as a single html file just like your line in f hand so you have written thousands of lines here thousands of lines so each line has got something to do with this page there are some images which you can see which are going from left to right there are some uh, videos can you see this campus visit to video bgc international video have been uploaded here so everything can be pointed here everything can be pointed here okay so video source i could not find video source you have the thumb last side so this is a kind of an uh, image so here you can see the image attachment and uh, yeah data quest ranking can you see this data quest ranking 
SABIT tops data quest ranking, something they have mentioned in that website that you can uh, refer in tax, of course, here. I could find this. Can you see this? Uh, where is the data quest ranking? It's not appearing. It may be hidden in some other HTML file. Okay. So likewise, I just wanted to show a small JPEG or PNG file. So just uh, give me a, some time. Mm. Okay, here you have a video. You have a format dot video. Okay, it's a, a lengthy code, an image also. So this is a, just a header, header of what you can see on your image. I just wanted to see the image. Can you guys? Can you see the image? Uh, JPG file. Oh yeah, can you see here now? Placement banner JPG dot JPG placement banner dot JPG. So this is an image file which appears to be as a GIF format. If you click on this, it will definitely will take you to that next HTML file. So what I was trying to say, so this HTML file is built upon some codes and can you just pass into this HTML file? One of my student has done this. One of my student for video results. Okay. Yeah, just uh, uh, give me, uh, oh, time is up. So you have fast video results. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll just wind up this session um, uh, with this and I'll ask uh, the same student to uh, take five or ten minutes of a presentation or demonstration so that you can pass into the video results website and there automatically the USN and the CAPTCHA codes will be entered. Okay, automatically and the particular USN or the particular data of a student will be extracted and will be stored in Excel file. Just using some five to ten lines of Python programming. Okay, I'll I'll just invite him for his presentation in the next class so that you can think in advance. Whenever you see for loop or if loop, you can always think. Okay, where it can be applicable applicable in real time situations. Okay, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for attending this session. Uh, sorry for delaying your other session for four minutes. Take care. Stay home. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.